Hello everyone. Today I'm going to discuss a topic related to respiratory system, that is respiratory assessment. I'm going to discuss the first part of respiratory assessment, that is history collection related to respiratory function. So this is the part one of this video. In part one, I'm going to discuss about the respiratory assessment history collection. I'm Julian K. Thomas, faculty working in Triplum College of Nursing. In this video, the objective, the group should be able to perform history collection related to respiratory function. Respiratory assessment. A respiratory examination or lung examination is performed as a part of physical examination in response to respiratory symptoms such as shortness of breath, cough or chest pain. The elements of respiratory assessment include thorough history collection, physical examination, other investigations related to respiratory function. The four steps of the respiratory exam include inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation of respiratory sounds. So whenever a patient comes with some respiratory problems or respiratory illness or some symptoms which is related to respiratory problems such as shortness of breath or cough or chest pain, a thorough respiratory exam examination or respiratory assessment should be carried out to rule out what is the problem of the patient. So the elements of respiratory assessment include history collection, physical examination, and the investigations which is related to the respiratory function. So in this video, we are going to discuss about history collection in detail. So if you want to identify what is the patient need in relation to respiratory system, it is very essential to do an accurate history and also to do a thorough physical examination. So by doing a history collection and physical examination, we can identify what is the patient need in relation to the respiratory system or respiratory problems. So this respiratory assessment can be done as a part of comprehensive physical examination or as a focused respiratory examination. Comprehensive physical examination means when a patient comes to the hospital for a routine checkup, a complete health assessment will be done. So respiratory assessment can be done as a part of comprehensive physical examination or as a focused respiratory examination means when a patient comes with specific symptoms of respiratory problems, that time a focused respiratory examination can be carried out. And also how to conduct a history collection or how to do a physical examination is completely based on the patient problem and degree of the respiratory distress. So the examiner has to use his judgment in collecting history collection and physical examination. If a patient respiratory distress is severe, we have to collect only important data which is related to the respiratory functions and the rest of the information and the physical examinations can be carried out once the, once the patient condition stabilizes. So if a respiratory distress is severe, only obtain pertinent information and defer a thorough assessment until the patient's conditions stabilizes. So the respiratory assessment, the important elements include history collection, physical examination, which includes the inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation, and the investigations, which is specific to the respiratory problems. So subjective data. In history collection, there are two types of data, that is subjective data and objective data. So subjective data is nothing but the information which is given by the patient or what is the feelings of the patients or the symptoms experienced by the patients. So what is a history collection? A history collection is a systematic collection of information or data obtained from a patient and other relevant sources concerning the patient physical status as well as his or her psychological, social and sexual functions. The subjective data is gathered from the patient and that cannot be measured with the five senses. So that is the feeling of the patient. For example, a pain, what is the severity or of extent of the pain the patient only can experience. It is a part of health assessment that involves collecting information through communication between the patient and the examiner. So the patient and the examiner will have a communication or a conversation in that the patient is going to going to say about the feelings or the symptoms experienced by the patient. That is nothing but the subjective data. Once the subjective data has been collected from the patient, the examiner has to do an objective data, that is physical examination, to verify whether the symptoms exist or not. So based on that objective data, the examiner has to plan for further investigations and come to the diagnosis, what is the problem of the patient. 
So the subjective assessment is an important part of the client experience. It allows the client to express their symptoms from their viewpoint and help to guide the objective assessment and plan a treatment program with the client's need at the forefront. So each subjective assessment should include certain components and these components we will see one by one. First is the history of present illness. In the history of present illness, for example, the patients come with certain complaints of chest pain or the patients come with the complaints of cough, we need to identify the site, the intensity or severity, the type or aggravating factor and the relieving factor that can be given as a mnemonic like sitta, or we can go with an another format that is the PQRST format. P is provocating or palliative, Q is the quality, R radiating, S is the severity and T is the time bound. So either these two format can be used for assessing what is the present symptoms or present illness of the patient. So if the patient comes with some symptoms, we need to identify what is the site, where the patient is having the problem, what is the intensity or severity of the problem, what is the type of the problem, what is the aggravating factor, and what is the relieving factor, what makes the symptoms more worsen, and what makes the symptoms relieved. And next, we need to identify the onset of the symptoms. The onset is sudden or gradual location, whether it is radiating to some part of the body. For example, if it is a chest pain, which is related to cardiac, it may be radiating to the shoulders or the hands. So if a chest pain, it is related to the respiratory, it will not radiate to any part. So we need to identify what is the location, then duration, the frequency or chronology, how often the patient is getting the problems. Is there any seasonal variation or daily the patient is having the symptoms? What is the characteristic or quality or severity of the problem? The current situation, the current situation, the symptom, the patient is getting improving out of the symptom or deteriorating out of the problem. Then effect on activities of daily living. The symptoms have any effect on doing activities of daily living, previous diagnosis of similar episodes or previous treatment and what, how effective was the treatment, whether the patient come out of the problem or patients still have the problem. So that we need to identify in the history of present illness. So Whatever the symptoms the patients comes with, we need to ask certain questions related to this aspect. That is the SITA format or the PQRST format or the onset, the location, the duration of the problem, the characteristics of the problem, the current situation of the problem. It has any effect on activities of daily living. Uh, what was the previous diagnosis and how far, what was the prognosis of that condition and what, what previous treatment has been given and how effective was the treatment. Next, we'll ask about the health history. So in the health history, we are going to identify what were the, what was the risk factors involved for having a respiratory disease in the patient. Is there any risk factors associated with the patient? For example, smoking. In smoking, we need to ask the patient has the habit of smoking. If the patient says, yes, I'm having the habit of smoking, then we need to identify what is the pack year. So pack year can be defined as, it is calculated by multiplying the number of packs of cigarettes smoked per day by the number of years the person has smoked. For example, if a person smoke one packet of cigarette per day for one year, then the pack year will be one or it can be represented as one pack year. So pack year is calculated as pack year, number of cigarettes packs per day into total number of years. So pack year should be calculated. So the indications of this pack year is uh, for heavy, heavy smokers, like if their pack year is more than 40 or 40. So there is a chance they are more prone to develop lung cancers or some lung diseases. So pack year we need to identify. Then exposure to smoke, whether the patient had any exposure to a secondary smoke and history of attempts to quit the methods and results. Whether if the patient had the history of smoking, any point of time he had the attempt to quit smoking and what method he has attempted and what was the result of that. So that we need to identify related to smoking. So smoking is a risk factor for some respiratory problems or respiratory illness. Second one is sedentary lifestyle. If the, uh, if the person is having a sedentary lifestyle, sitting for a long time, or such type of uh, lifestyle can increase the problem of respiratory system. 
then immobilization h then environmental exposure to dust chemicals asbestos air pollution then obesity and family history of any respiratory problems these are some of the risk factors that can increases the respiratory disease of a patient so the risk factors included in the respiratory diseases are smoking sedentary lifestyle immobilization age environmental exposure obesity and family history of any respiratory problems after health history will be collecting history related to past medical history whether the patient had any past history of any illness any past history of illness related to respiratory problems or any other chronic diseases or any systemic problems or any allergy and what is the immunization status of the patient should be collected so past history include any thoracic or nose or nasal problems any pharyngeo tracheal problems any trauma or surgery in the thoracic cavity or any previous hospitalization related to pulmonary or respiratory problems second we will be assessing the use of ventilation that is assistive devices for taking respiration for example the usage of a ventilator whether the patient had any history of using an assistive device for respiration that should be notified then respiratory disorders such as asthma bronchiectasis copd that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease tuberculosis bronchitis and emphysema that should be noted and any chronic disorders like any systemic disease like cardiac disorders cancer blood clotting or if the patient is having diabetes mellitus tuberculosis blood pressure asthma all these kind of systemic diseases or chronic diseases have an effect on the respiratory problem so if the patient is having any chronic diseases or systemic diseases should be noted and allergy allergy can be either due to dust seasonal variation food or drug or any other so any other allergies if the patient is having that also should be noted and the immunization status of the patient whether the patient had any past history of immunization for pneumococcal vaccine or with the influenza vaccine that also should be noted so in the past medical history any pulmonary disorders in the past the patient had or any assistive devices used for uh, respiration or any respiratory disorders systemic disorders or any chronic disorders allergy and the immunization status of the patient also should be noted coming to the surgical history whether the patient underwent any past surgery like any endoscopic procedures or any tracheostomy or any lobectomy any part of the lung segment has been removed any surgical uh, surgical interventions in the thoracic cavity or the chest should be noted coming to the personal and social history in the personal or what is the personal habit of the patient the patient had the history of smoking as uh, as what we have discussed that is smoking uh, we need to identify the pack year how many cigarettes or pack cigarettes per day into total number of years and sleep what is the sleep pattern of the patient whether the patient is getting a continuous sleep or a disturbed sleep sometimes if the patient is having any breathing difficulty suddenly the patient will wake up from the sleep so that is known as pnd paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea during the sleep the patient will be wake up for gasping of air so that is known as pnd or the patient what about the appetite or any weight loss for the past 6 months any obvious weight loss is there for the patient that also should be assessed then the bowel and bladder pattern of the patient exercise tolerance whether the patient can do the exercise or any difficulty in doing exercise or difficulty in climbing stairs need more oxygen demand that also should be elicited from the patient and home environment the socio economic conditions or condition of the patient whether the patient is living in a crowded area or socio what is the socio economic status of the patient what is the economic background of the patient what is the environment of the patient that we need to identify from the patient so these are some of the personal and social history should be taken from the patient that is smoking sleep appetite or weight loss bowel and bladder exercise tolerance home environment economic condition of the patient coming to the family health history any previous history of any communicable or hereditary diseases like if the patient had any respiratory illness in the family like tuberculosis emphysema lung cancer allergy and asthma to be noted so there is a chance of that is genetic disorder which can be transferred from one generation to the another generation that's why family health history also should be noted in this type of illness 
and also in subjective data we need to identify certain signs and symptoms the patient shows that are these are known as the cardinal signs and symptoms the cardinal signs and symptoms which is specific to the respiratory problems or the respiratory illness in this the first one is cough in this cough we need to assess the onset what is the onset of cough it is a sudden onset of cough or a gradual onset of cough and duration how long the patient is having the cough if the patients come with the complaints of cough first we need to assess the onset of the cough that is sudden or gradual duration how long the patient is having the cough uh, if it is acute it is less than 3 weeks if it is persistent it is more than 3 weeks if it is a chronic type of cough then it will be more than 8 weeks so based on the duration of the cough or time period we can classify it into acute persistent and chronic acute is less than 3 weeks persistent more than 3 weeks chronic more than 8 weeks next coming to the nature of the cough what type of cough the nature is dry cough or it is a moist cough if it is a wet wet type of cough which indicates it's a sign of infection and what is the type of the cough it is mucoid or mucopurulent or it's like a bubble type frothy or a rusty blood containing all this will indicates different type of respiratory disorders or respiratory illness if it is mucoid or mucopurulent in nature we can suspect tb if it is a frothy type bubbling type then we can expect a pulmonary edema or if it is a rusty type blood in nature we can even expect tuberculosis or lobar pneumonia so based on the type of the cough we can come to the conclusion of the diagnosis of disease then what is the order or smell of that uh, cough it is a foul smell or a normal or productive of the sputum when a patient cough he can expectorate the sputum that is productive cough or a non productive cough are they regularly clearing their throat or it is obstructing the airway so that we need to identify the cough it is clearing regularly clearing from the throat or it is it causes some obstructions in the throat that also should be elicited then coming to the sputum what is the amount of the sputum the normally is 100 ml of tracheobronchial secretions are produced daily and it is cleared subconsciously when coming to the sputum the amount of the sputum should be noted and what is the color of the sputum it is normal or yellowish or greenish or uh, presence of any blood and what is the order or smell of the sputum what is the consistency it is liquid in nature or it is sticky in nature and the pattern of productions early morning the patient will have a sputum production or throughout the day the patient will have a sputum production or night time the patient will cough more so what is the pattern of the production we need to elicit so based on the color of the sputum certain potential causes can be identified so if the sputum it is blood streak or red in color we can assume the potential cause may be an inflammation of the throat a larynx or the trachea or bronchi or some lung cancers or in case of some ulcers also this blood streaked sputum can be seen if the sputum is pink in color the blood formed from the alveoli and small peripheral bronchi may be the potential cause for the bleeding if copious or large amount of blood is seen cavity tertiary tb lung abscess bronchiectasis lung infarction pulmonary embolism may be the potential cause green or greenish in color it is possible due to the infection and rust pneumococcal bacteria or pulmonary tb may be the cause brownish in nature chronic bronchitis in chronic bronchitis the sputum can be either greenish yellowish or brown in color chronic pneumonia whitish brown color will be there so if it is whitish brown or brown the potential cause may be either chronic bronchitis or chronic pneumonia can be the reason if the sputum is yellowish purulent in nature it may be mainly due to the pus formation or hemophilus infection yellowish or green if it is mucopurulent either it can be bronchiectasis cystic fibrosis or pneumonia if it is whitish gray it can be either due to some chronic allergic bronchitis white milky or opaque mucoid viral infection or allergy or it can be either due to asthma foamy white this is the earlier phase of pulmonary edema foamy white color sputum or frothy pink it is can, it can be seen in case of severe pulmonary edema so these are some of the characteristic colors and what may be the potential cause so each color 
of the sputum can represent or we can diagnose what are the possible diagnosis with that color. Now coming to the second cardinal sign that is breathlessness. If the patient comes with a compliance of breathlessness, we need to identify how long the patient is having the breathlessness, what was the exercise tolerance of the patients. For example, the number of stairs the patient can climb or climb, uh, how far the patient can do his activities of daily living, uh, whether the patient is having any shortness of breath at the rest or association of paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. That is, during sleep or during night time, the patient will immediately wake up from the sleep with gasping of air. So that is known as paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. So PND is a condition that triggers sudden shortness of breath during sleeping, sudden wake up from sleep and gasping for air. So this, the main cause of this type PND is left ventricular failure. So associated swelling of angles or recurrent weight gain. In case of pulmonary edema, the patient will have swelling in the angle and there will be recent weight gain due to the accumulation of fluid in the body. So that also should be identified if the patient comes with breathlessness. Then activities, whether the patient is able to do his activities of daily living or a, a sudden breathing difficulty will be developed when the patient do activities of daily living that also need to be identified. Then constant, constant breathlessness, that is uh, when the patient is having some fibrosis or fluid collection, there will be constant breathlessness or breathing difficulty will be there. So when a patient comes with the complaints of breathlessness, all these details or history should be collected from the patient. The third cardinal sign is the chest pain. So chest pain can be two types. Either it can be associated with some respiratory problems or it can be associated with some cardiac problems. So we need to elicit what is the actual problem of the patient, whether it is a respiratory or a cardiac. So chest pain in respiratory patients usually originate from the musculoskeletal or the pleural or the tracheal inflammation as, la as lung parenchyma and the small airways which does not have pain fibers. So mostly this uh, respiratory type of chest pain will be originate from the musculoskeletal pleural or the tracheal inflammation. So this pain will be relieved by any heat application or the splinting or the pain medication. So typical examples of the cause of chest pain include pleuritic chest pain or trachea, it is any inflammation of the trachea or musculoskeletal chest wall pain. Anchina pectoris or pericarditis also, also the patient manifest with the symptoms of chest pain, but we should rule out whether it is a respiratory or cardiac. When the patient cough, the patient is having chest pain, which indicates something related to the respiratory problem. If the, if the patient when the patient is at rest, if the patient develops some chest problem, which indicates or it is radiating to some part of the body, we can correlate it with some cardiac problems. And the fourth cardinal symptom is the hemoptysis. So what is hemoptysis? It is defined as the spitting of blood derived from the lungs or bronchial tubes as a result of pulmonary or bronchial hemorrhage. When there is a bronchial hemorrhage or pulmonary hemorrhage, there will be bleeding coming out that is known as the hemoptysis. So hemoptysis can be classified as non-massive and massive based on the amount of the blood which comes out or cough out. Okay, blood in sputum is known as hemoptysis. And if the patient vomit the blood, that is hematomesis. So we need to uh, rule out whether it is a hemoptysis or it is a pseudo hemoptysis or a hematomesis based on the patient history. So the patient history should help to determine the amount of the blood and differentiate between hemoptysis, pseudo hemoptysis and hematomesis. So in adults, some of the common reason for this hemoptysis are bronchitis, bronchogenic carcinoma and pneumonia. These are some of the reason for hemoptysis. So hemoptysis is blood in sputum. So if the blood comes in vomitus, that is hematomesis. So it is very important to rule out whether it is a hemoptysis or it is a hematomesis for the correct diagnosis of the condition. And the fifth subjective data is the incontinence. Incontinence is that coughing or huffing increases. When the patient cough or huff, what will happen? The intra-abdominal pressure increases. So as a result, there will be urinary leakage. That is known as incontinence. This is an another cardinal symptom with respiratory problems. Seven other symptoms which 
uh, in relation with respiratory problems include the patient will come with the complaints of fever headache that is morning headache or because why the patient is getting morning headache means due to the carbon dioxide retention during the sleep the night early morning the patient will get severe headache so that we need to identify headache any peripheral edema any fluid accumulations throughout the body that may be the result of right heart failure shivering in case of any infection weight loss if there is excessive protein loss from the body in the form of cough or sputum the patient will get weight loss palpitation vomiting and nauseated feeling and gastrointestinal reflex these are some of the other symptoms which has some relation with the respiratory problems that also should be identified when the patient comes with the symptoms so to conclude the respiratory assessment the first part the history collection during the communication between the patient and the examiner the examiner has to thoroughly examine or thoroughly speak with the patient communicate with the patient and should identify what is the feeling or what is the symptoms experienced by the patient so the ability to carry out and document a full respiratory assessment is an essential skill for all nurses a prompt initial assessment allows immediate evaluation of severity of illness and appropriate treatment measures may warrant instigation at this point to rule out what is the conditions to or to obtain an objective data or to move with a further physical examination it is very essential to have a comprehensive patient history so always have a good communication with the patient and we should be able to collect all the history from the patient through the communication so to conclude i can say the words of sir william osler always listen to the patient they might be telling you the diagnosis if you converse correctly with the patients you can identify the correct diagnosis from the patient mouth itself so that is always listen to the patient they might be telling you the diagnosis this is the word by sir william osler if in a bad mood or distracted mood during the consultation or when you are taking when you are getting information from the patient you can end up making a history rather than taking a history so always keep in mind when you take the history collection you have to correct take the accurate details from the patients you should not avoid any important information from the patient so any minute information may end up with a wrong diagnosis so if in a bad mood or distracted during the consultation you can end up making a history rather than taking a history so these are the references so in this video i discuss about the first part of respiratory assessment that is history collection and the continuation and the video will be continued in part 2 and part 3 with the physical examination and the investigations thank you